Section 19 of The Haunted Hour, an anthology by Margaret Widmer. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Josh Kibbe. My Love That Was So True, Part 3. The Blue Closet by William Morris. The Damozels. Lady Alice, Lady Louise, between the wash of the tumbling seas, we are ready to sing, if you so please. So lay your long hands on the keys. Sing, La Date Puri. And ever the great bell overhead boomed in the wind a knell for the dead, though no one told it a knell for the dead. Lady Louise. Sister, let the measure swell, not too loud, for you sing not well if you drown the faint boom of the bell. He is weary, so am I. And ever the chevron overhead flapped on the banner of the dead. Was he asleep, or was he dead? Lady Alice. Alice the Queen and Louise the Queen, two demoiselles wearing purple and green, four lone ladies dwelling here from day to day and year to year. And there is none to let us go, to break the locks of the doors below, or shovel away the heaped-up snow. And when we die no man will know that we are dead. But they give us leave once every year on Christmas Eve, to sing in the closet blue one song, and we should be so long, so long, if we dared in singing, for dream on dream they float on in a happy stream. They float from the gold strings, float from the keys, float from the opened lips of Louise. But alas, the sea salt oozes through the chinks of the tiles of the closet blue. And ever the great bell overhead booms in the wind a knell for the dead. The wind plays on it a knell for the dead. They sing all together. How long ago was it, how long ago, he came to this tower with hands full of snow? Kneel down, O love Louise, kneel down, he said, and sprinkled the dusty snow over my head. He watched the snow melting, it ran through my hair, ran over my shoulders, white shoulders and bare. I cannot weep for thee, poor love Louise, for my tears are all hidden deep under the seas. In a golden blue casket she keeps all my tears, but my eyes are no longer blue as in old years. Yea, they grow gray with time, grow small and dry. I am so feeble now, would I might die. And in truth the great bell overhead left off pealing for the dead, perchance because the wind was dead. Will he come back again, or is he dead? Or is he sleeping, my scarf round his head? Or did they strangle him as he lay there with the long scarlet scarf I used to wear? Only I pray thee, Lord, let him come here. Both his soul and his body to me are most dear. Dear Lord that loves me, I wait to receive either body or spirit this wild Christmas Eve. Through the floor shot up a lily red, with a patch of earth from the land of the dead, for he was strong in the land of the dead. What matter that his cheeks were pale, his kind kissed lips all grey? O oh, love Louise, have you waited long? O oh, my lord Arthur, yea! What if his hair that brushed her cheek was stiff with frozen rhyme? His eyes were grown quite blue again, as in the happy time. O oh, love Louise, this is the key of the happy golden land. O oh, sisters, cross the bridge with me, my eyes are full of sand. What matter that I cannot see if he take me by the hand? And ever the great bell overhead and the tumbling sea mourned for the dead, for their song ceased and they were dead. The Ghost's Petition by Christina Georgina Rossetti There's a footstep coming, look out and see. The leaves are falling, the wind is calling, no one cometh across the lea. There's a footstep coming, oh, sister, look! The ripple flashes, the white foam dashes, no one cometh across the brook. But he promised that he would come. Tonight, tomorrow, in joy or sorrow, he must keep his word and must come home. For he promised that he would come. His word was given from earth to heaven, he must keep his word and must come home. Go to sleep, my sweet sister Jane. You can slumber who need not number, hour after hour in doubt and pain. I shall sit here a while and watch. Listening, hoping, for one hand groping, in deep shadow to find the latch. After the dark and before the light, one lay sleeping, and one sat weeping, who had watched and wept the weary night. After the night and before the day, one lay sleeping, and one sat weeping, watching, weeping for one away. There came a footstep climbing the stair. Someone standing out on the landing shook the door like a puff of air. Shook the door, and in he passed. Did he enter? In the room center stood her husband, the door shut fast. Oh, Robin, but you are cold, chilled with the night dew, so lily-white you look like a stray lamb from our fold. Oh, Robin, but you are late, come and sit near me, sit here and cheer me, 
blue the flame burnt in the grate lay not down your head on my breast i cannot hold you kind wife nor fold you in the shelter that you love best feel not after my clasping hand i am but a shadow come from the meadow where many lie but no tree can stand we are trees that have shed their leaves our heads lie low there but no tears flow there only i grieve for my wife who grieves i could rest if you would not moan hour after hour i have no power to shut my ears as i lie alone i could rest if you would not cry but there's no sleeping while you sit weeping watching weeping so bitterly woe's me woe's me for this i have heard o night of sorrow o black to-morrow is it thus that you keep your word o you who used so to shelter me warm from the least wind why now the east wind is warmer than you whom i quake to see o my husband of flesh and blood for whom my mother i left and brother and all i had accounting it good what do you do there under the ground in the dark hollow i'm fain to follow what do you do there what have you found what i do there i must not tell but i have plenty kind wife content ye it is well with us it is well tender hand hath made our nest our fear is ended our hope is blended with present pleasure and we have rest oh but robin i'm fain to come if your present days are so pleasant for my days are so wearisome yet i'll dry my tears for your sake why should i tease you who cannot please you any more with the pains i take he and she by sir edwin arnold she is dead they said to him come away kiss her and leave her thy love is clay they smoothed her tresses of dark brown hair on her forehead of stone they laid it fair over her eyes that gazed too much they drew the lids with a gentle touch with a tender touch they closed up well the sweet thin lips that had secrets to tell above her brows and beautiful face they tied her veil and her marriage lace and drew on her white feet her white silk shoes which were the whitest no eye could choose and over her bosom they crossed her hands come away they said god understands and there was silence and nothing there but silence and sense of eglantere and jasmine and roses and rosemary and they said as a lady should lie lies she and they held their breath till they left the room with a shudder a glance at its stillness and gloom but he who loved her too well to dread the sweet the stately the beautiful dead he lit his lamp and he took the key and turned it alone again he and she he and she but she would not speak though he kissed in the old place the quiet cheek he and she yet she would not smile though he called her the name she loved erewhile he and she still she did not move to any passionate whisper of love then he said cold lips and breast without breath is there no voice or language of death dumb to the ear and still to the sense but to heart and soul distinct and tense see now i will listen with soul not ear what is the secret of dying dear was it the infinite wonder of all that you ever could let life's flower fall or was it a greater marvel to feel the perfect calm o'er the agony steal was the miracle greater to find out deep beyond all dreams sink downward that sleep did life roll back its record dear and show as they say it does past things clear and was it the innermost heart of the bliss to find out so what a wisdom love is o oh, perfect dead o oh, dead most dear i hold the breath of my soul to hear i listen as deep as the terrible hell as high as to heaven and you do not tell there must be pleasure in dying sweet to make you so placid from head to feet i would tell you darling if i were dead and twere your hot tears upon my brow shed i would say though the angel of death had laid his sword on my lips to keep it unsaid you should not ask vainly with streaming eyes which of all deaths was the chiefest surprise the very strangest and suddenest thing of all the surprises that dying must bring ah foolish world o oh, most kind dead though he told me who will believe it was said who will believe that he heard her say with the old sweet voice in the dear old way the utmost wonder is this i hear and see you and love you and kiss you dear and am your angel who was your bride and know that though dead i have never died end of section nineteen